This isn't one of my normal videos. This is a response to a specific situation. So if you aren't following the Docs of Joe from the Carolinas, a friend of mine, please ignore this video. Before I start, I would like to make the following absolutely clear. Everything that happened after Joe's information was shared, involving the sharing of it specifically, still stands. That means that Corey Good and Jordan Sather are still just as responsible for the most people seeing this. They're responsible for contacting Joe's place of employment, harassing a health, many other healthcare workers, and many other patients by their actions. This fact alone means that the outcome of the situation is very bad for Corey Good's reputation. Cliff High, a great creator whom I respect, tweeted that the YouTube channel, The Edge of Wonder, shouted me out. I'm glad they did. It will bring more Corey Good supporters here to hear what I have to say. Corey Good is a liar and a fraud. Jordan Sather is a liar and a fraud. Edge of Wonder, both of them, are frauds and feed into fake stories to try and grow their YouTube channel to make money. I'm going to show them how much I appreciate the shout out by making a red pill to pay the bill Edge of Wonder. Now you fully understand that I do not support lying, money hungry, doxing YouTubers. Let me show you who they all are. Sit back, relax, press subscribe, like, and share, and enjoy the show. Turn on the billboard, Busy. Climbing high, shining walls reflect the sky. Magic city and the sun has the darkness on the run. It's growing bright, the city, light the city, right the city now. I reported a story from another YouTuber as a gesture of kindness, good faith, and I did it to help Joe. After revisiting the original screenshot evidence from that story, I have realized a horrible truth. I was lied to, and things are not how they seem. Normally I take a lot of time to sift through evidence sent to me before reporting a story. This story was emailed to me by CW Chanter even though he lied about emailing it to me later. I read through what he sent me quickly, checked it in Photoshop to see if anything strange jumped out at me, watched his video to see what he was saying. Since he promised us all evidence would be sent in, that we would get to interview a whistleblower from the group that targeted Joe, and that that whistleblower had absolute evidence that she was being honest, we ran the story. This is what I received. These screenshots show a group on Facebook Messenger discussing Emery Smith, Corey Good. They are fact checking, they are creating memes, they're talking about videos to make, articles to write. Basically, the screenshots show that this group of people are fans of Corey and have turned against Corey's network, Gaia. This is all I've received. I didn't get any more evidence. I didn't get any proof that this group did release Joe's information. I didn't get to interview the whistleblower. And with what I had, I couldn't prove a thing that my original video stated months ago when the story broke. I noticed this was wrong and mentioned it in a stream, but quickly realized that before I talked about it any further, I should check with other YouTubers and my team. In Discord, over a period of a few days, we shared all the screenshots, discussed the issue. Kev Baker, Joelbot5, among other YouTubers and viewers, all decided that we need all of the original evidence from Kelly and CW, and we decided we would ask them to send it. Kev Baker did this on his show. But something strange happened. During his show, Kelly and CW found out that we needed this, which is good, right? They just want everyone to know the truth, so they sent us all the screenshots, right? No. Kelly found out and started to act very rude and strange, along with CW. They told us they wouldn't send the screenshots or the videos that CW had to delete. So I went live and told the community what was going on, that I had changed my mind on what people called Doxgate, and now I was 50-50 that the original group did it, or that, 
50-50, CW had something to do with it. I said this because it's true. It's how I felt. No one would get up on their channel saying that they can prove something 100% that happened when they can't without an ulterior motivation. CW and Kelly, they responded much different than you would think. They responded with insults, a lot of talking, illogical ranting, and more insults. <laughs> and after a few days went by, I was assured by Kev Baker that he would calm Kelly down and get the screenshots. About two or three days that go by, finally CW did a video with Kelly. And through the insults, lies, diversions that they promised that the screenshots would be sent to kev so we waited another day and after kev didn't get anything from them a member of my team shared in discord a screenshot of kelly claiming that quote she tried to send screenshots to kev but he didn't want them because of my uni rock this is kelly boldface lying kev didn't say that so i had some more digging had to do some more digging and find out what was really going on in the situation. Instead of checking CW screenshots and listening to Kelly's story, I went back to the start of the situation and found evidence that things are in fact completely different than what we were told and that I had made a horrible mistake in sharing CW Chanter's story. Several other YouTubers with many viewers went and grabbed the real story of what happened to Joe and compared it to CW's videos. Spirit and soul of the universe, spirit and soul of all creation, I begin with a prayer. Bless this rocket house and all who live within the rocket house. Honestly, honestly, my heart's beating. I'm alive. Before we begin, I've spoken to my guests at length before starting tonight, and I can assure you, we are here for people's benefit, not for people's harm. We are doing what we are doing because truth is important to get out. What I did is simple. What my guests did was hard, but I will allow her to speak for herself. What we will do now is simply the following, just bring you up to speed. What you have just heard is the start of his expose that relies on two things. The words of Kelly, his whistleblower, in the video, and the screenshot evidence that they put up. We will address the screenshot evidence next. But as for Kelly, CW and Kelly are now a couple, and we should be happy for them when it comes to their new relationship. But... When it comes to the story they tell, now we must consider the new situation. When this video is done and you hear Kelly's words as testimony, you start believing what they are saying. But after this video and they meet up in real life, went to contact in the desert together, CW left his wife, moved in with Kelly and started to stream with her. And they admit many things. I'll only stick to what relates to the story. Kelly and CW admitted in front of their whole audience and the internet that they knew each other well before this video. That it took CW months to talk her into doing the video with him. And that CW had to delete many videos of them together because it could affect his divorce if his wife used those videos from his channel against him. Though I am happy these two are happy and together, truly. I now must reconsider what I know in regards to the story. I cannot apply Kelly's words as testimony or truth. I have to consider that if CW wanted her to change part of her story that she may, being close to him, may not not knowing and being a whistleblower and any journalist would never consider a witness for testimony to a story that is intimate with the journalist who broke the story it's bad practice it's illogical and it will not be done by me i would do this to corey good and jordan sather if the situations were reversed now let's listen to key parts of cw and kelly's video with that in mind not that kelly would lie or that cw would ask her to but that with this circumstance in the forefront she is now not a whistleblower from a group testifying to a journalist or youtuber she is the journalist's mistress by definition and could be biased and if this information would have been revealed in cw's video we would have all felt differently in the start of it invariably many of you many of you have already seen this video hopefully you have if you haven't it's there for your liking and much of the information presented therein has already spread 
through various outlets and various mediums throughout the community. First, he starts to refer you to his last video, which he has deleted and you cannot find. And in that video, there is absolutely no proof of an order to do anything. Joe is not mentioned in any way, shape or form, and it does not prove what he's saying. Although, using that because of this thing that's spread, he's trying to appeal to it instead of actually showing you proof. Good in his Tribune Alliance and the Full Disclosure Network, headed by Roger Ramsour. Remember the name Roger Ramsour because you're going to be hearing it again in just a minute. Do not forget this. Beginning with Joe from the Carolinas, a doxing campaign began on Twitter through two primary sources, a YouTube account known as Thomas Crown or the Thomas Crown Affair, as well as a uh, Twitter account known as Organa Alderana that doxed me and my 83-year-old father, an elderly man, maybe not long for this world. Months before Doxgate occurred, I had released my own name, simply my name, in a video because I was tired of being harassed by people, one specific person in particular, who was threatening to release my name. This is him admitting that he released his name. Now, we all know the truth. He released his name. He released the fact that he was a lawyer. He released the fact that his father was a lawyer. He released the fact that him and his father, that he is in his father's law, for, law firm. He gave all of this out. And specifically, well, who was trying to say they were going to dox UCW? Well, he says that this group was trying to dox him. This is the most important thing. He says he released that to this group ran by Corey Good and Rob. Roger Ramzur. He says that he gave them this information. Now, what these people did was literally mention this information that he put out on, on a public web page. Legally, as a lawyer, he knows that's not a dox, but if he does connect himself to Joe's dox, he gets a lot of attention and becomes a big piece of the entire puzzle. What would you say if I proved to you right now that Corey Good and Roger Ramzur knew who this man was for the last four or five years, that they've talked to him often? that they were one of the first people to share his channel, to discuss him, and that he's been on their websites, they've talked about him in interviews, and that he's been lying to you the entire time. Because I hate to say it, CW, if Roger Ramzur and Corey Good are running the group, and if you're trying to say that this group is going to dox you somehow by putting out your info that you've given them, it doesn't make sense. If the group has known who you were, all of this narrative falls apart. Well, take a look at this. When you deal with pathological liars, I'm telling you, it's really hard to track things. It's really hard to get to the truth. And when you deal with lawyers, same thing, especially when the lawyer you're dealing with is a pathological liar. But here you go. The absolute proof that everything he's done and said in Doxgate is an absolute lie. This is Corey Goods manager, Roger Ramzur. Listen to this and I'll tell you why his entire narrative is now busted. We appreciate people like, um, you know, Justin Deschamps um, or CW Chanter this last week that have vastly different views. Um, Basically, this is Roger Ramzur talking up CW Chanter. And as I say this, I'm going to put on the screen some other screenshots that will back up what I'm saying even more. But around four years ago, 2016 of end to beginning of 2017, I have found many pieces of evidence where Corey Good and Roger Ramzur, which if you know Corey Good, you know that Roger Ramzur is behind him and knows everything about him and makes half of his money because he's his manager. Know who CW Chanter is, have known the whole time, not one of them, both both of them. Not only that, I will prove to you right now that they knew his name, they knew his occupation, and they knew everything about him in the beginning of his YouTube videos. In the beginning. And Dark Journalist, this is where you're going to once again feel like I'm your best friend. Do you remember Dark Journalist? This. Back when... Well, let me just read it to you really quick. CW Chanter, aka Benjamin, you know, I'm not going to say his last name, is an attorney put out a video last year admitting he once had an altar to Satan in his bedroom and worshiped Satan during his youth while performing in a punk rock band. 
This was when the Dark Alliance accused Roger Richards, Good's business partner, of being a Satanist based on a tattoo and music Richard performed in his youth. The original video has since been removed by Chanter, but supposedly clips of the video are still circulating around the internet. CW Chanter is either lying about the fact that Corey Good and Roger Ramzur are running this group, or he's lying about the fact that they identified him and wanted to dox him, or he's lying about everything. Why don't I just break this down for you, please, one more time? But for those of you who need me to explain it, this group ran, as CW says, by Good and Ramzur, have known his identity the entirety of his YouTube channel. When CW started on YouTube, he promoted Corey Good and Roger Ramzur. It was not until Corey Good and Ramzur contacted CW Chanter that he stopped promoting them and started to debunk or insult them or just talk about them all the time. I believe this is from people who watched him back then who do not no, no longer watch him due to um, realizing who he is. They have stated to me why and what he used to say and what it is to now. I'm sure he literally will deny every part of this, but if you've watched him, then you know. He's admitted to talking to these guys. He's admitting to being close to Ramzur and Good for an extended period of time. And I refuse to believe that all these years later in 2019, they tried tried to dox him, and I refuse to believe now the next thing I'm about to show you. Remember earlier in the video, I told you we were going to visit the only piece of evidence that Kelly and CW put out about Doxgate that actually proved their story. Also, remember where I told you that this piece of evidence was accused of being faked and it was accused of being, uh, I'll tell you how it could have been faked really quickly at first. It could have been faked because if you look at it, it would have been so easy for them just to create a joy profile because they're not in any closed group. They don't prove that they're in any closed group. The only thing they prove, and we've tested this extensively, is that this is Kelly's messenger or it's a Facebook messenger. Now listen to what this says. We also learned the real identities of the YouTubers that have been out for Corey and David's blood all year. One is a clinical psychologist and the other a dead attorney. I hope you guys had a great night and are off to a fabulous day. Whether or not they created this by going into Messenger, downloading her profile pic and sending this from a sock account and then cutting things off so that we wouldn't tell, whether they created this in Photoshop or some, some other manner, or whether or not this is not slam dunk proof that CW and Joe were doxxed by this group like he says it's the backbone of his entire narrative that is falled apart completely up to now but to add a little bit more tea to the spillage if you look it just means that they the group learned cw's identity and joe's identity we'll take a look at this if we look at jordan sather sharing it which jordan you are still just as bad as you were whether cw did this or not from what you did after his identity was there this is the account that did put out Joe from the Carolinas information. Do you see the name? Thomas C. 1063015, and then there's more to it. What's important is, is that you see what account it is, because CW told you that for a fact that this was Thomas C. Well, let me break the narrative a little more. When my video started, I played you a clip where CW starts off his narrative telling you that Thomas Crown is the individual responsible for doxing him and Joe. Well, now you know that he didn't dox CW because CW's information was public, which therefore makes it not a dox. But did he dox Joe? No. You're like, what? What are you talking about, Unirock? CW Chanter lied to all of us. He told us that it was Thomas Crown for sure. And you heard it. I played it for you that doxed Joe. Well, if you look, I just showed you that the account that docs Joe, but shared by Jordan Sather and everybody else, was at Thomas C. Numbers, 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 numbers. Well, what does this say? At Mr. Thomas Crown 1. You see, somebody made a new account and tried to make it look like Thomas Crown docs Joe. Whoever docs Joe, was it Thomas Crown? I don't think so, because why would Thomas Crown try to make a sock account to dox Joe? So that no one knew it was him, but then name it after him? Well, Thomas Crown's account, this one that CW had been fighting with for a year, it was in existence for a year or more. The account that docks Joe is in existence for a few days before it doxed Joe. 
You need to let that rest in your mind for a second. It had to rest in mine. You're telling me that CW had no reason to tell you that Thomas crowned Dox Joe or that this group did? You mean to tell me it was a sock account the whole time, which literally means that anyone in the whole world could have doxed Joe? Well, who done it? Wait, wait, wait. Put on the brakes for a minute. So everything is different than what we've been told. CW does have connections to people that have a grudge against Gaia. And how did he hook up with Kelly in the first place? Let's slow down. Could CW have ulterior motivations for everything that we've just learned? How possible is it that he does? Well, I'd say it's more possible than his own evidence against this group. Wait. What else is more likely than his story? Could him and Kelly knowing each other factor into why he came out and lied about so much in this story? And hold on a minute, if CW is just a debunker in the debunking community, why would he do any of this in the first place? Well, I'm glad you asked. I mean, I'm glad I asked. Well, I'm glad these are the logical questions that we are forced to ask. There we go. So consider this. Why is it that CW Chanter does his videos in the first place against good? That's all he talks about anyway. Why is it that CW Chanter was on Twitter fighting with this group for a year before this all happened? I mean, that would make it to where CW is the luckiest guy in the world. He and his friends, I call them sock accounts, are railing against this group for years, trying to convince other random people on Twitter of a narrative that Corey Good is a doxer, and that Joy and her group are evil harasser victim creators, even though I do think some of them are. He has to be the luckiest dude ever, I mean think about it. CW is the lead member of a group on Twitter that is fighting Joy's group on Twitter, and then one of Joy's group members caves in and goes to join the other group and sells out Joy. So factually, we could say that CW got what he wanted on Twitter all along. They were engaged in a battle of secret troll group versus secret troll group, if we describe it like CW. And luckily, instead of one of CW's group members joining Joy's squad force, Kelly decided to join CW's squad force. And CW took the opportunity. He poured through Kelly's Facebook Messenger proof provably concocted a narrative against Joy and Corey provably and managed to bait all of us other YouTubers into inflaming his story so that he could deal the death blow to the other group on Twitter provably because Joy and her group disappeared off of Twitter right after all of this but it gets even deeper I can't tell you everything because all I can do is go back and look at what everyone said, look at all the evidence is there, look for the people that are lying and look for the ones that are representing things truthfully. But I can say this, I've invited Jay Widener on the show and I think after talking to him, I'll have a better understanding of everything that happened. Listen to this clip because it is going to give you the reason, in my opinion, that all of this happened, of course, subject to part two of this video. Yeah, as I was trying to explain the last time that we were on, and I've been kind of, how I'm missing this, hope I'm not getting old. Um, anyway, uh, so I, I, I'm retired now, and, and uh, Corey's attorney sends Gaia a letter, just about the time I'm retiring, that he has trademarked SSP, Secret Space Program, and ba 20 and back. Okay. And that guy has to pay every time they use those words, they're gonna have to pay Corey. And that would be a lot of money for Corey, by the way. And um, Corey could also, as I said in the previous program, sell those terms to a large corporation who could hmm. then say that they don't even use those terms anymore. And so Gaia, rightfully so, I think, uh, is suing Corey, Corey back, uh, saying that, no, you can't do that. We're going to keep the, and keep these public. We're not going to take them either. We want them to just stay as they were, public words. And um, within a week of Gaia's attorney sending the letter, that's when all of the you-know-what hit the rotating blade and a gem... Uh, after Thomas Crown, emails being out, doxing people. Uh, you can see that there's a, definitely a task force assigned to destroy Gaia. Exactly, Jay. There is a task force assigned to destroy Gaia and a task force assigned to destroy the destroyers. 
At the end of this video, I'm just going to speak. I'm not going to read from research I've done or notes that I've taken. My alliance is to nothing more than the truth. And anytime anyone contacts me, I tell them, you get one mess up with me. You get one major slip up. And I say that because sometimes people mess up, but sometimes people purposely are doing things and you can't tell when you first start talking to them. I now know what CW Chanter is and I've tried to let the community know, but even like when a drug addict says they're sober and convinces the family, but one person stands up and says, hey, he's not now. It'll take the drug addict doing something to convince the family he's back on drugs. I can't convince the community until the person proves who they really are. Regardless of what happened and regardless of what's going on, I will tell you this. Docsgate happened. Joe's the victim. Dark journalist is the victim. Not CW Chanter. Not the other people that are standing up crying that you should watch them, worship them, pay them, tip them, and all the other things they want to gain from this horrible situation. I don't seek to gain from this horrible situation from anything more than just reporting it and getting to the truth on it. And I don't even care to gain from that. I just mean it's probably an unnatural thing that'll happen. People talk about it. It goes around. That's normal stuff to get from it. But injecting yourself into this, acting like you were docked by the same people, why don't you go back and see why he did it? He did it because Joe is getting a massive amount of attention, and he wanted the attention too. And in fact, that's why he's lied about me. That's why he begged to come on my show. That's why he treated me like he did. It's why he baited me into doing shows and other things. Now, if he'll do that to me, he's going to do it to every other person out there who's dumb enough to communicate with them, work with them, or to watch him and support him. I don't mind if you don't believe me because I know this. These people, not the ones on my screen. Let me take them off. CW, people like CW and Kelly and the others that are lying that are trying to play victim in this, that aren't. The people that are provably victims, fine. But the people that aren't victims in this, that are trying to play victim, in my opinion, they're always gonna show their true colors someday. And I think you'll know the minute they do, who was the guy that told me? So that's why I don't have a stake in this. That's why I take my time. But I'll tell you this, I got a stake in the communities. I try to get the truth into these communities. I try to stand up and show you provably what's wrong in these communities. His story, CW story of the Docsgate is not true. It is his narrative. And it, you, all you got to do to see it is go back and watch it. That's it. Just go watch it from start to finish. You will not disagree with me there. But for the people that have been attacking me and coming at me, 90% of them were sock accounts with those guys behind them. So I don't mind. I mind what the community thinks. Dark Journalist, Cliff High, and the others. So let me say it again. Corey Good and Jordan Sather, you are despised people spreading that docs around like you did getting the most amount of people to see it is in my the the, the uh, bad intention that led you to share it around makes you just as guilty as the person that released it and in my opinion it doesn't mean you did it but it means you did what I just said you did and I will never defend them this video is not me defending them because it's not gonna help their reputation at all for me to do the video it's just gonna show you the truth about the people that are lying and I heard the edge of wonder said something about me those guys I uh, I'm doing a red pill to pay the bill on them because I've tracked some information about them I know what they were doing before they started talking about all this and I know why they started talking about all this stuff so I'm gonna drop a little bit of a Moab on them, but I'll make them sweat just like I made CW sweat over this last week. I'm gonna tell you this, you wanna disagree with me on opinion? Do it till the cows come home. But the facts in this case are that they have lied over and over and over again. And if you trust them after that, it's a fact that you're a fool or a sheep or that you're just not paying attention. I'm Uni Rock. this video has taken me a week to track the information went so deep i was going into twitter the wayback machine google archives for days and nights if you want to help me <laughs> i didn't make a damn thing i just wasted four days that i could have done anything else and if you want to help me out hit the subscribe button the like button no matter what you think hit the share button in my opinion give me a like or a dislike based on what you want to do consider my paypal 
Because I pro I mean, I could have done other stuff and been gaining money and, and working through this. www.paypal.me forward slash unirock. I don't aim to gain nothing, but it'd be nice to get back a little bit of that time I spent. And I have a Patreon also with other ways to support my show in the about section. I am on the side of the people out there that are not trying to rip people off and that aren't making a mockery of all these things that we talk about. Anyone else that'll tell you any different, just watch my videos and then try to argue it with me. Audi 5000, see you next time. Whoa! Everything you saw in this video, just about, I mean, there's a lot more, but it's the stuff that relates to this. Let's roll out with one of my favorite edits I've ever done because this wasn't Red Pill to Pay the Bill, CW Chanter. Although, I have been building one for about three months. Let me just give you the introduction. And me and Busy, he's asleep. Stop smoking all that crack, Biz. You won't fall asleep like this. We'll see you next time. Roll it. I forgot. You only get one, son. Process began initially, and I will, I will admit this because I'm not trying to, to lie to anybody, to trick anybody. Uh, I considered myself part of the lineage of um, uh, El, uh, Alistair Crowley, L. Ron Hubbard, uh, Arida Samaj, that I thought that I was going to purposely create something that uh, looked like a religion, smelled like a religion, and talked like a religion, so that I could achieve, that I could achieve an act. And the end was so that I could Can't have sway and control over people, Can't so that them. I could make money, so that I could use female right. bodies, and I could abuse men who right. made me feel like less of a man. Right. Let, let's, let so I'll, I'll introduce you. Um, people, people who've been following me may have seen that I posted a video that we did in one of, in my CW Chanter in the Wild playlist, because you were nice enough, you know, a couple, about, maybe about a month ago to invite me onto your channel, mm -hmm. explaining Esoterica to, to, to chat with you. Yeah. All right? Mm -hmm. And we, we started talking and conversing about the issues under the sun, and, um... Hey. <laughs> Maybe we should start with a little levity and explain to the people that, you know, what we're doing here is we're not trying to promote ourselves. We're not trying to promote ourselves. Promote ourselves. Promote ourselves. We're, we yeah. You know, because the allegation is going to pot an allegation could be raised that we did what we did for clicks, for views, for whatever. And, you know what I mean? I want to apologize to you in this public forum because the reason that you're coming forward in this way, something that I promised you you would not have to do, is because CW Chanter lacks certain technical capabilities when it comes to operating, you know, complicated computer software programs like Google Hangouts and yes. share a screen, right? right? The whole reason I did this would have nothing to do with increasing my popularity, had nothing to do with, had nothing to do with, had nothing to do with, had nothing to do with clicks, had nothing to do with views. I did this to get the truth out because it should have been out. I wanted people to know what was really going on, and that's why I initially didn't come out and do it myself. That's why I gave you the information, because I didn't want it to be about me. People start. People start. Started to notice. Um, I never read out my sources. Everything's going to be a okay. Yeah. Just remember, you're talking to CW Chanter, right? CW Chanter. Right. Primary proofs are out there.
the jig is up. We've done what we had to do, and now, you know, we find ourselves, you know, here. And I, I, the reason I think it's good that we have a good, let, you know, light attitude about this is to put things in perspective, to explain that this is not some sort of, you know, dark cabal, you know, operation or anything. Someone somewhere along the line was able to, you know, crack my sophisticated, you know. Someone somewhere along the line was able to you know, crack my sophisticated, you know.